Hello, I'm Nan Simonson, and I am, I always start this way, I am the author of Aging Powerfully. I am 71. I wrote this book three weeks before I turned 70. Uh, I mean, I published it three weeks before I turned 70. And I knew that because I had worked with a lifestyle medical practice as a health and lifestyle coach for a couple of years now, it's going on three and a half years, that we could see remarkable changes in health and longevity and activity and happiness on the part of our patients and my clients who followed the recommendations of lifestyle as medicine as put forth by the College of Lifestyle Medicine. So in this book, it's part memoir because I've come a bit of a distance and in through a eating disorder, a lifetime eating disorder to a place of, gosh, health, wellness and such joy in life. Uh, not to mention, I feel like I'm aging backwards and um, powerfully is an anagram for 10 um, lifestyle modalities, the first five of which are straight from the College of Lifestyle Medicine uh, that I'm sharing. And today I'm sharing something that is near and dear to my heart because although all of the pillars of lifestyle medicine, the things that we do that make us healthy, like sleep a lot, get rid of stress with different ways um, that we can control. Uh, we can't always control outdoor stress or out the stress coming at us. Um, movement, essential. Uh, community and connectedness, very important for the health of our brain and therefore our body. Uh, and then finally food. And today we're going to talk about that. Uh, the title of this um, presentation is Plant-Based Eating Made Simple. And it came from the inspiration and a lot of the words from a Dr. Nikki Davis as I listened to a podcast that she did. And I'll back way up. First of all, I heard her speak uh, with um, Chef AJ on a podcast as this spunky, wonderful family practice and lifestyle medical doctor was testing ranch dressings. That's a long story. <laughs> That's kind of a fun story, but I'm not going to go into that right now. And um, she mentioned that that day or that afternoon, she was going to be doing a podcast on plant-based eating made easy. And I listened to that podcast, and it was terrific. It's an hour and a half. She covers much more than I can here. Um, but I took a lot of her ideas, and then I took my own experience as well. In a, in a snapshot, um, I became anorexic at 14, bulimic at 15, was not able to completely stop and walk away from the eating disorder until I was 67. That's a long, long time. And a lot of that had to do with the circumstances of my body being affected by the foods I was eating. I'm in a, a um, eating disorder recovery certification program because there's more to learn than my own experience and I want to be able to offer that to people as well and one of the things that we've been talking about a lot my uh, the um, founder of the edit program eating disorder intuitive training Dr. Uh, uh, Dory McCubry um, has actually come to agree with me and realize that um, a lot of what drives us to do things can come from previous situations in our lives and our feelings about ourselves and our feelings about our, um, our body and our worth and our past. But you know what? None of that 
was resolved for me, none of it, um, in order to recover. In order to recover from something that was entrenched for over 50 years, I was able to recover within three months of reading a book, Brain Over Binge, and of starting a whole food plant-based diet. So I feel like I owe my life to this lifestyle. Isn't that dramatic? Could that possibly be true? Well, you know what? When you have a secret, if you know what I'm talking about, if you have an addictive situation going, you can't when you're sad or upset, you shop too much. And then you've got this this shame about stuff you bought that you didn't know. Or you gamble too much. Or you drink too much. Or you eat too much. You start out saying, okay, today I'm going to be on that diet and lose that 10 pounds. And then the, the moment you see somebody's cupcakes, you can down five of them. If you have any of that going on, you know what I'm talking about. It can own you. Well, a full-blown, well established eating disorder can own a lot of not only your behavior but also of your self-esteem and that's what I dealt with and so I feel like I didn't have a full life until I was able to walk away from that and I have walked away from it completely boom 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 done and how did I do that I believe with the help of a whole food plant-based diet and Beyond that, I am healthier at 71 than I was at 60, maybe than I was at 50, because the food that is nourishing me is purely nourishing foods. My, at, at what was it, 68, 9, 10, 11, I had, I early part of 68, all of those things that happened to old people began happening cholesterol way up blood pressure not great uh, blood sugar super high pre-diabetic um, looked like cardiovascular disease and so I was referred as people often are to the specialist every specialist said here take this take it for life and you're gonna be just fine well we're never fine with medication it may ameliorate the symptoms it may make it look like we're gonna be okay statins don't extend life they simply lower cholesterol but that doesn't mean that the disease has been arrested and I knew all of that and I said no to all of them I'm gonna do it with food and they said you can't do it with food food doesn't work that way and basically I thought to myself rather than saying out loud just watch me um, and that was three and a half well actually that was almost four years ago and I've proved myself right proven the um, the precepts of lifestyle as medicine right and food has a, a major amount to do with that whole foods that are plant-based so I know a lot of attention has been paid to this subject even in my Costco magazine they did in the last several months they have paid attention to the move toward whole foods plant-based the problem is they get stuck with the plant-based part but aren't really um, playing out the um, whole food part because there are so many products there and and I'll talk about that in, in just a minute that are not whole food and that because the manufacturers have gotten a hold of them just like they have with those foods we can't stop eating um, Lay's potato chips I bet you can't eat just one Pringles you're gonna eat the whole darn can they can make any vegetable or what's the difference between a Pringle potato and one of their puffy multiple vegetable freeze-dried things that are still loaded with oil and still loaded with salt and impossible to stop eating a whole food I can eat an apple maybe two apples and be really full nourished and satisfied on the other hand if I have a oh gosh 
well, I can't even think of an example with the apple that would be the same as, let's say, a sugar snap pea. I can eat a bag of sugar snap peas. I'd never get through it. I'd feel satisfied. I'd have a lot of fiber in me, and I'd be really happy. On the other hand, those sugar snap peas, and, and that bag would have been mm, 70 calories, maybe, 80 calories, and full of fiber. Instead, that bag of freeze-dried sugar snap peas, I could eat, that would be 400 calories loaded with salt, loaded with oil. I think I've made my point, so I'm going to leave that part alone. So back to Dr. Nikki Davis, whose podcast aired on March 28th, and um, was she was interviewed by the Salt Lake City Thrive Group. I'm going to look more into that group because it's a whole food plant-based group from uh, with chapters in many, many cities. Um, I'm going to recommend that, or I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to pre uh, predict that if you're watching this, this is something that you have taken an interest in well as well. I'm going to recommend that you not consider a whole food plant-based decision to be a diet because a diet is something that you just that you do for a short period to get a quick result and then you go back to the other stuff. The SAD American Diet, SAD, is standard American diet, is wrought with things that are ruining our health. Simply look around you. When somebody says, oh, no, 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 I'm on a, I'm on a healthy diet. I eat, you know, the things that, that I find in restaurants and fast food restaurants and processed foods in the supermarket, but, um, but I choose well. And then in the next breath, they tell me about their swollen joints, their painful um, movements, their high cholesterol, high this, high that. No, it's not working out for them so well. A whole food plant-based diet is one that is anti-inflammatory, that is so full of phytonutrients and phytochemicals and um, uh, antioxidants and the result of which because of the fiber, full of fiber, full of protein, full of vitamins, full of minerals, uh, because of that fiber, the fiber is fermented in our microbiome, our gut, and um, releases a metabolite called short chain fatty acids among other short uh, uh, metabolites that nourishes our entire body. I, I could go on and on about that, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm simply going to say that the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, that is, and, and I don't mean to sound um, demeaning here, but they are heavily funded by the ag business, the meat business, the processed food business, they wouldn't say something and risk their funds if they didn't believe it plus some. But their newest guidelines are the recommendations that Americans eat at least three quarters of our calories, meaning 75% of our calories, from plant-based whole food sources. And that is, that's quite a step for them to take. Um, Anything more would probably alienate the public. And I may be adding the whole food part there. I'm not sure they said the whole food part. I know that they said plant-based. The problem with that, though, is French fries and ketchup can be considered plant-based. French fries are poison, almost, because they're fried in grease that is overheated of questionable sources and sky high in omega-6s. We need omega-6 fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids. They're essential fatty acids, which mean we don't make them ourselves. However, there need to be a balance between threes and sixes. Nearly one-to-one -one ratio, maybe at worst three-to-one ratio, um, three sixes to one um, three. But the omega-6s will not only get so far out of balance we're looking at 1 to 20 or 20 to 1 30 to 1 of 6s to 3s 
any kind of balance, dramatic balance, will mean that because there's one en enzyme that that um, breaks down and makes and utilizes the six or three, that one enzyme is preferential to the six. So if we have a massive amount of sixes, they come from the oils, they come from other processed um, items in our diet, but a lot of that comes from the plant oils. So plant oils aren't healthy. No oil is particularly healthy calorie-wise, but I'll leave that alone. Anyway, there's a very good reason, in other words, not to go with fried anything, oily anything, salty anything. And so fries are not a good food. I'm not going to say, and I'm going to talk about this later, um, that we're going to be perfect because there's it's very... <laughs> There's no such thing usually as perfect adherence to anything, but by the same token, um, making a habit of anything that's not good for you is simply waiting for the next shoe to drop. So if the USDA is recommending 75% plants, and research says that a plant-based or even plant-exclusive diet could allow us to age, live, and age and live disease-free and even mitigate existing diseases, then I would say, wouldn't that make sense? And that's what I'm here to talk about today, and that's why I thought this would be a good subject. Um, it can be it can be sustainable, it can be enjoyable, it can be preferential. When my husband Tim and I transitioned, began transitioning in October of 2018 to a plant-based diet because earlier in that year we had both had health numbers that were not good and both of us were several years away from turning 70. And if you're starting downhill then you're in big trouble. Um, and unfortunately, in our society, in America, a lot of people are starting downhill a lot earlier than that um, because, again, our diet simply won't sustain stellar health, uh, not the things that we get often, as often as um, media can uh, attract us, and that's very often. Um, so what is, what do I mean by whole foods that are plant-based? I'm talking about greens, green leafy vegetables, vegetables of all kinds, starchy vegetables um, like squashes and potatoes, sweet potatoes and plain potatoes and fingerling potatoes and fruits and all tubers and whole grains and legumes and even seeds and nuts and avocado. Those last three we'll talk about again because we can eat freely of whole foods if we are not adding oils to them and if we are eating those foods that are not already very rich in calories like seeds, nuts, and avocados, even though I eat those every day, a little bit of them every day, but again, I'll get to that. So again, simple, sustainable, enjoyable, and preferential. I would not go back to eating the way I was eating and neither would my husband, Tim, not for anything. We love the food that we eat. And so the good news there is, and I would say this to anybody, the good news there is that your tastes um, develop for cleaner foods when your tongue's not coated with grease and and so much salt that it it attracts you to only salty foods, so much oil, so much sugar, you can taste real food, whole foods. So that's the introduction to what I'm saying to help you understand that this is something that you can do that doesn't feel like a slog, that doesn't feel like you're entering the end of your fun days. That is absolutely not so, or I wouldn't be doing it either. And again, both he and I, my husband Tim and I, feel better than we have felt in a long, long time. Um, 
transitional challenges. Transitioning means when you're, you've decided, okay, I'm going to go whole food plant-based or I'm going to simply start adding a lot more plants, which will then by nature, unless you're simply eating too much, going to sort of crowd out some other ones. One of the things I would say is be aware and wary of the vegan junk food because, as I said, the manufacturers are now getting on board of what people are being encouraged to do and are gaining interest in, but you've got to be a label reader. You have to turn the package over and look at the number of grams of fat. If something is 100 calories and has 9 grams of fat, or let's say 10 grams of fat, each gram of fat is nine calories. Now, protein's only four calories a gram. Carbohydrates are only four calories a gram. Alcohol is seven calories a gram, but fat is nine calories a gram. Well, if something has nine, and this is really typical with some of these low calorie foods that are then puffed up to make us want them. Even seaweeds, some of the seaweeds will be 30 calories for the package, but the package will have three grams of fat at nine calories per gram, the entire thing is almost fat. Now, what kind of fat? It's going to be a vegetable fat. What else would it be? What is that full of? Omega-6 fatty acids. And so you need to watch that. Then you look at the salt, the sodium, something that's an innocuous food, some innocent little thing like, I'll go back to that sugar snap pea, um, that is so healthy for you, such good fiber, such um, uh, the, the enzymes in it, the natural phytonutrients are so great for you, but then the thing gets obliterated when it gets treated in such a way with salts and, and processing and things that stabilize it and sort of kill off anything that's real in it. That food could still be relatively low calorie, but what it's left with then is just a bunch of stuff in it that doesn't serve our body. So be careful of that. Read labels. Look at salt. Look at sugar. That's the other thing that's put in things that have no business having sugar. French fries are addictive. Why? Because they have fat, oil, and in many cases, sugar. Your hamburger bun, sugar. You don't know it. You can't taste it, but it's there, and it makes you want more and more of it. I just had a story about that, and I... I um, one of my previous podcasts, I think it was called uh, Sugar Surprise, Who Would Have Thunk, or something like that. It's a really interesting story about a hidden sugar that just about ruined um, a holiday for me. Okay, um, family traditions, that's another uh, a challenge because what we eat comes down from not just genetics, because we'll say in genetic health, uh, if my family had diabetes, oh, I probably will, because it's genetics, and if they have heart disease, genetics, and if they have colorectal cancer, it's genetics. Maybe what you're really talking about as opposed to the genetics, and that may be so, is the family recipes. The recipes of foods like charred meats, families that love barbecuing and barbecue all the time. What you're looking at is charred meat. What is a charred meat? It's a meat that has had um, uh, the um, Maillard effect, um, Maillard effect, which means that it has produced acrylamides, and acrylamides are carcinogens. So maybe when a family has shared health challenges, it has a lot to do with shared family recipes. Um, but family traditions, we grow up with those recipes, but we also grow up with the traditions of the family. And when you walk away from that, that can feel uncomfortable and can be something that has to be paid attention to because it is truly something that will affect you. I now am, as you know, on three and a half years of plant-based and in my first year, I would make a food that the family had. It could be animal-based, even though I, it really bothered me to buy that meat carcass to use to cook. 
Well, that ended that first year. Since then, I won't put any, I won't use any animal product in the house. You know, that's not true. When my grandsons came last time, I believed that I bought milk for them. They were spending the night and they just don't, they don't like, they won't drink the plant milk and I can't put that on them. And yeah, I can, I could do all kinds of things, but I didn't choose to. Um, so yeah, family traditions can weigh on us. Social imp implications. We can feel a little bit different. I and and feel a little uncomfortable and have our friends say what are you doing why are you doing that and that can be a bit of a challenge um, changing our routine most of our meals become routine a lot of families mine included have a and and had a rotating kind of a a, a um, schedule of meals there were certain think of your own family certain meals that you've gotten used to that the family really likes that you do on a rotating basis and that will end up um, being affected but it doesn't have to necessarily change and I'll, I'll talk to you about that as well um, you can get used to anything including different meals on a different rotation and it doesn't even necessarily have to go that way because there's a possibility that that same meal that comfort food meal that your family loves can be made plant-based and taste just as good different <laughs> but just as good um, and then letting go of habitual foods and in some cases habitual uh, addictive foods is something that requires a transition um, they can be made plant-based. What I would say also is that you must trust that eventually you won't want those foods anymore. An interesting food that I, I took forever to get um, to end, to stop even having in the house was sardines. I don't know why. I don't know what that was about sardines. I just liked the flavor of them on toast with mustard and onion and um, tomato. Weird. But I loved them, and I must have thought I needed them. Or, you know, sometimes people say, eat intuitively. If you want it, then your body needs it. That was baloney. I decided that I wanted it for whatever reasons. When I, I um, finally stopped, I ended up looking at a can in the cupboard and thinking, I don't want this in here. I don't want to eat them again. Um, I am plant-based. Even these little fish don't don't deserve to be killed so I can eat them. And I gave the sardines away. Oh, I gave it to my cat. Um, some cats can be made vegan, but it's pretty unlikely um, in any case. Okay. Um, making it easier. Clean up your environment. Get rid of trigger foods. If it's And Chef AJ says, and she's being quoted by everybody now, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth, eventually. Eventually, it'll get there, <laughs> or in your cat's milk, in my, in my case. Uh, truly clean up your environment. If you're in a household with people that will not change and are completely disinterested in your changes, let me lower that, um, move things to different places uh, in the house so that you're not looking at a, a, um, a food that is tempting you because eventually especially in times of stress you just kind of get worn down just don't have around the things that are going to ping you every time you look at them i had an interesting situation and i have no desire to put junky sugary foods in my body i honor my body and i don't want that in there and i don't want the effect that it will have on me but i was out somewhere and i stopped to get a cup of coffee i do a day it was it was um in the morning and i wanted what i do is a half calf i'm even a little sensitive to caffeine so i don't even want a lot of caffeine but i like a half calf and i walked into the well shopping center these different drive throughs they all had a lot of people in line so i got out at a dunkin donut to get a half calf you know you can buy dunkin donut coffee places so it's supposed to be an okay coffee i thought well, it was. It was fine. But all I wanted was a half-calf 
coffee. But I'll tell you something, standing in that line, staring at all those donuts, I started thinking, ooh, I wonder if they have anything gluten-free. Ooh, I wonder if they have anything that's like a toast that's gluten-free. I didn't want anything they had. Every one of those products were filled with, filled with emulsifiers and stabilizers and, and, I mean, probably very little real food in anything in that whole store. Um, but I sat there and looked at all of that, and I should never have even been in there. And it didn't mean that, uh, that um, that's a bad thing. But I, I felt that twinge, and I thought, man, I thought that was long gone. Don't tempt yourself. You don't need the stress. Um, so get it out of your house. Um, as I said, make new family traditions. Uh, I have people coming for Easter, and this will be the third Easter that I've offered Easter brunch or lunch, uh, Easter egg hunt, and the meal is tacos. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to have all of those fillings. I do a crumble that looks like a meat crumble, but it is it is a, a vegan crumble. Um, but I also do a lentil. Uh, you know what I do? I'm going to say this real quickly for a quick meal. And if you don't have a Trader Joe's, there are other things you can do. You can get canned, but Trader Joe's has a French steamed lentil a pound of it in a package where they keep their vegetables. It's really quite good. So I use that pound. I use their taco mix, but if you use the whole bag, so this makes this really inexpensive, if you use the whole bag of their taco mix, which is where they have their con their um, jars of condiments, it's too strong. And it even says you can use a half a bag. A half a bag of that, a can of tomatoes. I had previously dry sauteed an onion. Um, if you have some jalapeno, you can put some jalapeno. If you have some chopped carrot, you could add some chopped carrot for the color of the chopped carrot. And mix that all up with a little bit of water and, and basically use the directions on the back of the taco bag, but instead of a pound of meat, a, a pound of their lentils. It's delicious, absolutely delicious. And it will, unless you have a big family, give you enough to freeze for another meal. And then that on a flat toasted tortilla with refried beans. And, well, if you're doing a taco bar, and this is easy for kids, for the family, you have all kinds of things. Um, you have Mexican rice, and I have that on my website and my YouTube channel, and I'll tell you what those, um, what those, how to get into those. Um, but Mexican rice and refried beans just out of a can with salsa in it. It makes it really tasty but not hot for the kids because the salsa has to be very mild. And chopped cabbage and, um, and um, olives and guacamole or chopped avocado. And think of everything you could love on a taco. And then some little side dishes that, that are really tasty treats. And I use flat tostada type tacos and I use soft um, corn tortillas that are just kept in a little container that keeps them moist and warm and they can go with either one marvelous meal and that's going to be our Easter and for the Easter dessert I ended up making a um, did I make a carrot I may have used made a carrot cake that uses carrot and sweet potato and um, uh, um, date paste for the sweetener, whole foods. The whole thing was whole foods and everybody loved the entire meal. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about traditions. That's also what I'm talking about when I'm talking about easy. The only thing about the taco meal is that you'll have, <laughs> I was going to say 50 bowls, but Tim and I do that taco meal. We use the flap tortilla. There's a company called um, Guillero that we can get in Southern California that is these taco shells that are not fried but they're baked and they're made very cleanly. It's a little bit of lime, a little bit of salt and then water and that's it. And they're pre-stacked and super easy. We do that one to two times a week because anything I've got in the refrigerator will start stacking up and I use my vegan sour cream and it's marvelous with, with a good salsa. 
that's how easy plant-based can be. Now I'm on a tangent and way off, so I'm going to get back to what I'm trying to say. So you can create new traditions like my Easter tacos, and people are fine coming for that. Um, get and create support. Um, there are social media support what I, I'll say support groups. You can look for meetups that are whole food plant-based, in-person events. There are a lot of vegan uh, roving um, fairs, uh, these food trucks that go around. you got to be really careful because you can get deep fried vegan stuff. It, it just means they left the animal out of it, but they're still basically giving you a donut. Uh, so be careful with that. Um, but the social media uh, people, I'm going to give you a list uh, in a little bit of people that I pay attention to that can help you understand the lifestyle but and the food and the choices and the, the preparation, but at the same time also remind you of what you're doing and why. Um, and... Um, you can also, when you're confronted with attitude by people who say, you're doing what? Why would you do that? It's easy, to, at least for me, because I know the science and I'm convinced of the science and I'm in the medical field and I see remarkable recovery on the part of patients who came in so broken. I see that all the time and I know my own transformation. There is no way... I could have stopped, I'm, I'm sure of that. Uh, my binge behavior, my food addiction, if I didn't have food that stabilized me to the core, and that's what the whole food, starch-based, plant-based um, food combination did for me, and, and when I talk a little bit more about the food, uh, it may help you understand why. But one of the things that Dr. Doug Lyle, who wrote The Pleasure Trap, and that book documents and explains why when we eat processed foods, it's almost impossible to stop eating them because they are so, they're manufactured in such a way that that it is designed to basically hijack your what we call pleasure system, send the dopamine sky high and make you want more and more and more. Uh, the tobacco industry bought many of the um, processed foods industries. They know exactly what they're doing. So you can say something like rather than and what the reason I brought all that up is that I could just I could go on and on about the science, and too often I do. On the other hand, if I want to keep it light and breezy and easy and simple, I can say, and Dr. Dial, uh, Dr. Lyle even um, uh, recommends this, I'm just trying it out, just giving it a go. So far, it's working well for me. In other words, what are they going to say to that? I'm just trying this out, just giving it a go. It's working well for me, though, so I'm going to stick with it for a while. What do they say? Um, you don't have to get into the justification. Eating out, man, I have a group that I work with um, every week, um, our skills group at the clinic, and a couple of people talked about the challenges of being with people and eating out or eating their food and how they can get and stay um, compliant and by complying, I mean stay with their own choices of how they want to nourish their bodies rather than feel that they have to go along with the crowd. And so it's not something, and some of these people have been doing this for a while, so it's not something that's always easy. Um, but one of the things you can do is put Happy Cow on your app, and Happy Cow is a vegetarian and vegan restaurant app. I leave it on the vegetarian, not just the vegan, even though I am a whole, even though I'm completely whole food plant based, no animal product at all. And vegetarian can include milk and eggs and cheese. Um, 
if they are pesco ovo or, or lacto ovo or pesco vegetarians. Um, but if I have vegetarian, most vegetarian restaurants offer vegan options. They just leave out those things that we don't want. And that's how I found my favorite vegan restaurant, one that we go to for brunch every Sunday. It's called Oasis here in Riverside, California. Um, I was just out and needed to eat and brought it up and there it was, uh, like a mile from me. I couldn't believe it. Um, watch out for the salt, oil, and sugar. As I said, even in a vegan restaurant, ask them, is that fried? Look carefully at the menu because you could end up getting a meal that's as much of a grease pit or salt overload as something that you are avoiding and feel disappointed by that. Um, you can order stir fries without oil. Can you, you can say to a, a, uh, a server to ask the chef, can you throw together a bunch of vegetables for me, stir fry it without oil and give it to me with whatever full grain you have. Whole grain like brown rice would be fine and a side of tamari or uh, low sodium soy sauce. I even bring my own tamari with me because I can go to a sushi restaurant near us and get a, a roll that does not have any animal product in it, but I can't have regular soy sauce because regular so soy sauce has gluten and I can't have gluten and they're loaded with salt and I don't want that. So I bring my little container. I met a friend, actually I met a friend on Thursday for lunch and Friday for lunch at the same restaurant. Um, it's one that serves a salad bowl that I love. They leave off the chicken and just give me black beans and it already has quinoa and I add, I always ask for extra vegetables so or extra greens. So the thing's piled high. But I bring my own dressing because my dressing is not fat free. It has tamari in it or tahini, excuse me. But I feel very comfortable using that rather than they're full of oil salad dressing. So things like that you can control. Um, and it's just a little sealed container, even a little teeny jar that you soak off the label um, for, you know, whatever you little jar you happen to have. You can put your dressing in and nobody even thinks twice about it. Uh, you can always order a baked potato over which you have them put salsa and steamed broccoli and maybe um, some salsa or hot sauce. Things like that you can find in many uh, restaurants. If, you, if they don't have salsa, a lot of places, even like a steak restaurant, will have a baked potato. Just a plain baked potato, give me some steam, give me your sides. What vegetables do you have on the side? Put that on there and I'll take some, um, they may not have salsa, uh, just some pepper or if you thought ahead, you can bring your vegan sour cream, that's really good. And my vegan sour cream that you'll find on my channel is, is silken tofu. It's, a, it's basically a protein that you're adding to your food. Um, whipped up with lemon juice. Um, or starchy vegetables or starchy or your grains. Most places can have all of that for you. And if they put a little oil and they have nothing that didn't have some oil, then as Voltaire says, <laughs> don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good and just do the best you can. Um, okay, plan ahead for lapses. And that means sometimes all heck breaks loose. Uh, I've heard this again and again. Something happens, a death in the family, an illness, maybe even a holiday. And everything that was systematic gets turned upside down. And the person gets off of their schedule, out of their routine, starts doing what they didn't really plan to do and then feel like they completely lost touch with their original intent and wonder if they can ever go back. Plan for those things and the possibility of them. Think of who you could call. Think of the books you've read that inspire you. Think of like the China study, like Fiber Fueled, 
like in my case brain over binge I can't ever imagine going back to that lifestyle um, but boy do I have some backup and maybe that backup will help prevent that forever because I can think of what that felt like and dislike it enough to know that I never ever want to go back that direction again um, but again there are so many resources that you can go to that will remind you of why you made your decision in the first place the movies like Cowspiracy like um, uh, Forks Over Knives um, Game Changer um, there's a new one called Milked um, that gets a little bit uh, they had some photographs in there that made me quite sad and um, but it was real and it's it's again one of the reasons that my decisions are etched in stone um, okay uh, podcasts go to YouTube have your favorites like Chef AJ Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook Drina Burton uh, Angela Davis who is, um, or Brenda, excuse me, Brenda Davis, who is a plant-based dietitian who is internationally known. Listen to any of their lectures and it'll remind you of why you made the choices you made and why you're going to stay with them. So plan and accept the fact that you may have some, um, some lapses. Um, Making easy, making eating easy. Um, plant, first of all, don't let anyone tell you that plant-based is expensive. It can be if you're doing a lot of plant-based um, plant processed foods, getting everything packaged, but there's nothing less expensive than potatoes, beans, grains, especially in bulk sections. You can get your berries. I love berries. Berries are very good for you, and I, we recommend berries on a daily basis. Get them frozen. Um, Trader Joe's has their wild blueberries, a pound of them for what, two fifty, and you use a little bit of them in your oatmeal or on the side. Make a chia pudding. Chia. You can buy bulk at a place called Winco and keep your prices very low. It's just when you start getting into the more processed uh, plant foods that you can get into some higher prices. I do use tahini and that's a little more pricey but I use Trader Joe's. It lasts well and it's delicious and it creams up things that I like, like my creamy ranch style dressing, the dressing that I make that is AJ's, um, Chef AJ's uh, house dressing. That's the other thing I want to mention. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, uh, bulk bins, low-cost canned beans. You can sometimes get uh, a dozen beans for $10 on sale. Big bags of frozen vegetables at Costco or at things like Smart and Final, depending on where you are in the country, you'll find stores like that. Uh, use frozen foods like hash brown potatoes. You can, at Trader Joe's, I know, they have a bag of hash brown potatoes, nothing but shredded potatoes, sometimes with onions, sometimes with a little bit of green pepper. You put those on a very hot pan and you let them brown, a non-stick pan, flip it over, do it again and you have these crispy potatoes. You can put a steamed potato and a waffle iron and scrunch it down. Four grids, four potatoes. Let them sit until they're very, very crispy. Get an air fryer. Do the same thing. Those are inexpensive foods that can give you a real thrill, especially when they're crunchy. Um, cooked rice, vegetables, um, mixed vegetables that can th be thrown in one after another after another, bags full with some tomatoes and some broth to make a delicious soup with beans or pasta. Those are all simple, simple f uh, meals. In my kitchen right now, I have a plate cooling of a quinoa, buckwheat, and millet mix. 
I yesterday made my oat groats. In the morning, the oat groats get cooked with soy milk, and then I put in flax and chia and um, hemp, and that's breakfast with some berries on top and a half a banana. Simple, delicious. I wouldn't trade it in for anything. Absolutely satisfying. And mood and um, appetite um, stabilizing. Uh, let's see. Um, what foods do you love? Ask yourself what it would be the hardest to give up. And then look for whole food plant-based recipes. Go to Google. Whole food plant-based spaghetti sauce. Whole food plant-based meatloaf. Uh, um, burger patties. And you can find, I've had parties where the burgers were my black bean patties. And what we love about a burger might be the greasy, bloody meat, because you're used to that, but maybe it's the onion and tomato and, and um, mustard and mayonnaise replacement, which in my case is my, my um, tofu sour cream. Um, again, no oil in that at all. Um, find new foods that you enjoy. So first of all, what foods do you love? See if you can make them whole food plant-based. Choose meals that can be a theme night, like taco night, burger night, Asian stir-fried night, mashed potato and gravy night. You'll find a, a cauliflower mashed potato at nansimmonson.com or YouTube Nan Simmonson and leave a space between the first name and the last name on YouTube Nan um, space Simmonson and you'll find a recipe for the my favorite mushroom gravy and and I think I even call it Nan's favorite mushroom gravy and the mashed potatoes the cauliflower mashed potatoes nobody will know that they are not regular potatoes. You use a cashew cream just by blending up cashews to give it a creaminess. It's delicious and it's decadent. So think of what you like, find a replacement for that, and then consider having different nights of the week where you have a family favorite. That tradition can right away become something that makes everybody feel connected to what you're doing. Um, find new foods that you enjoy. Try some recipes. Look at my channel, look at Chef AJ, look at Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook. I'll give you a couple of others. And um, make a couple of meals. Some people don't like cooking. I can get in the kitchen and just fall in love with the process of trying a new recipe. That may not be you. You may not have the time. You may not have the desire at all to do that, in which case, just think of some of the things that I've just talked about and some easy ways that you can try some new things. If you can get, as I said, six or seven um, recipes that are, um, that, that you love, that are satisfying, that may be enough for you to have all that you want to do and do it easily. The other thing I'll say is consider soups and stews and chilies and lentil bowls, lentil dishes, because when you make those, you can make a huge pot full, freeze a number of meals and enough pots full of a number of meals and you end up with a frozen food library that you can go in and just pick out meals to keep things simple for the evening. And then some steamed vegetables or fresh salad on the side, and you have it made. One, And I want to recommend another thing, and that is that you consider the value of keeping at least two of your meals repetitive and simple, two of the meals in a day. Um, for example, what I have found I love, I just mentioned, I do a smoothie, but it lasts three days. So we share, a, and it makes three um, stainless steel containers, you know, beverage containers. And so we share those for three days. And the reason I do the smoothie is that it's full of greens. I use um, Brooke, uh, Brooke Goldner's of the Alzheimer, the autoimmune solution. And her 
smoothies are three quarters greens or vegetables and one quarter fruit. And so I make that so I get some greens in the morning. Greens in the morning are very helpful because of the thylakoids, and that's something you can look it up. Thylakoids, it's the DNA producing, photosynthesizing element in plants that are really good for us, and it's a great way to start a morning. So a little bit of smoothie, but every morning the oatmeal, and even when we travel, I'll bring some oatmeal. I'll just bring it that I can add boiling water to. For lunch, it's always the same. A huge chopped green salad. So it's a bunch of greens, then a bunch of vegetables, and then my favorite dressing. Find some favorite dressings. Try mine, try others, and then just keep that on hand. You could buy it. Trader Joe's has one that's called a um, spicy cashew dressing. I like mine better, but if I didn't want to make a dressing, I would use that, probably add a little bit more lemon to it. Um, what vegetables do you love? How can you, count, can you prepare vegetables in such a way that you're going to love them as much, if not more, like cauliflower in your potatoes? That's a great way to use a pound and a half of cauliflower and add vegetables to your meal in a way that most people wouldn't even notice. Um, so add more plants to whatever it is you're eating now more plants, more plant-type foods, and again, you can somewhat push out other foods because there's only so much one can eat. Embrace whole food carbohydrates and eat them to satiety. 75% of what I eat is carbohydrate. It's grains, tubers, and legumes, so beans, whole grains, potatoes, starches of all kinds, but always whole food, and a mass of vegetables and fruit. There's fruit at every meal, there's greens, actually, at every meal, and there are starches. And that, you can eat to satiety. You're eating when you're hungry, you're eating to satiety, you're never feeling deprived because the food is rich and delicious, and it can sustain you for long periods of time. The people who can't make plant-based work for them probably are not eating enough starches. They may be eating too many beans, no, I don't mean that, nuts, they're just making it a nut fest or a seed fest or an avocado fest, even though my husband, who's slender, eats one whole avocado a day on his wheat toast and he makes a big fat sandwich and then has salad and then has a potato, all of that is his lunch. Um, and it works really well. Okay, so ideas, and I think I've mentioned a number one, a, a number of these, I think I'm going on a bit. Uh, batch prep and serve beans, grains, potatoes, sauces, dressings, hummus, soups, stews, tacos, and burgers. You can batch press, uh, prep all of that and keep things like that in the freezer. If you don't want to make your own, buy them if you have to. The problem is almost everything you buy will have too much oil, too much salt, and probably some sugar. But it's better to do that than continuing to eat in a way that is going to ultimately make you ill if it's not already. Um, let's see. Oh, and once you have these batch prepped meals, they can be put together very easily. As I said before, a potato, steamed broccoli, a sauce on top of that, a salad on the side, fruit for dessert. And they're wonderful meals. They're very, very tasty meals. Um, and again, you're going to adapt what's tasty to me, so tasty that I wouldn't go without it, may not, well, good example. Do you think somebody who's eating Fruit Loops is going to be turned on by my oatmeal? Nah. But give them my oatmeal for a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, and Fruit Loops will be disgusting. <laughs> and I mean disgusting, as they should be. Um, okay. We make a tostada. I mentioned that earlier, that flat tostada with all those things on top of it. 
that's an easy meal. A dinner bowl, a chopped salad, chopped vegetables, maybe leftover vegetables with hot rice and hot beans and some salsa on top of that and some sauce that you like. Delicious. Um, frozen broccoli or frozen rice and then add broccoli to that, some low sodium tamari or soy sauce, um, some toasted sesame seeds. That's a delicious, moist, flavorful, highly nutritious, high fiber, high protein meal. And then the mashed potatoes I mentioned, a big plate, we just had this, big plate of mashed potatoes, an entire pound and a half of mushrooms, that I sauteed, and I got those for $5, five ninety five dollars at um, Costco, a pound and a half of crimini mushrooms, or baby bells, actually. And by sauteing, no oil, this is just some onion that is cooked in a hot, nonstick pan, and then the mushrooms, and they just weep off a lot of their juice, and a little bit of broth, and some seasonings, and it cooks down, and if, if it's juicy and you want it to be a little thicker, you can put a little bit of arrowroot or cornstarch to thicken it. The whole thing gets thrown on those mashed potatoes. It's decadent, decadent. Um, you can add beans to the, um, the mushrooms if you want to add more protein, but actually you're getting plenty of protein there. Um, and then finally, um, what are some of the benefits of whole food plant-based no, uh, uh, low or no salt, oil, or sugar, which is what I do. I don't eat processed sugar, real sugar. I'll eat date paste to sweeten things. I don't add oil to things, or if I add it, it's a squirt in a nonstick pan and brush it right off again with a paper towel. Um, and I, and I, eat, I do eat a little bit, use a little bit of salt. Eliminating most fast foods, not all. Chipotle has some really good options. Uh, and most restaurant foods, not all. There are some good ones out there. Uh, and avoid protein isolates. When you, unless you're in a transitional stage, uh, yeah, stage where you are brand new to this, you're just dying for a hamburger, then go and get a Beyond Burger or Impossible Burger. I don't want those because they are 80% fat, loaded with salt. Um, they are um, not a whole food. My microbiome doesn't really know what to do with them, but it's better than having a big, fat, full of cholesterol beef patty that something had to be basically tortured and killed for. Um, I could get into that whole thing too, uh, but that's a different subject. Uh, the animal will appreciate it, the planet will appreciate it, and your body will appreciate it. So what are the benefits? Stellar health, the prevention of cardiovascular disease almost completely if you eliminate these sources of um, foods that raise your cholesterol. As soon as I went plant-based, within three months, my cholesterol, three, three and a half months, my cholesterol went from 230 down below 150, which is sort of called the golden number. Unless somebody has totally trashed their, their um, arterial system, the chances of heart disease are, are like next to nothing. And you can keep it like that your entire life. And that's why we say, most chronic diseases in America, up to 80% of them, even cancers, some of the cancers, are absolutely lifestyle related and could be prevented this way. Um, with whole food plant-based, if you do those things, low soy, salt, oil, sugar, eliminate most processed foods and avoid the isolates, not only stellar health, but no calorie counting, no portion control, eat when hungry, stop when full. As I said, nature's antidepressant and appetite suppressant. That is what I found for myself. That is what my clients and patients find. And it is, um, it's worth every moment of effort. Um, what are some of the resources? The social media people that can make you excited for the next meal and trying either new recipes or maybe finding what they found, like Chef AJ who lost 80 pounds, Plentiful Kiki 
who lost 80 pounds. She's relatively young, couple of young kids at home. Plentiful Kiki, K-I, or K-I-K-K-I. Uh, Chef AJ, Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook. Kathy Fisher has a blog as well as a cooking channel. Dr. McDougall has massive amounts of free recipes. Uh, dietitian Chef uh, Jeff Novick, he is a huge entity in the plant-based world and he is a as a graduate degree in health and nutrition and he like um, Joel Dr. Joel Furman are very much into the nutrients and choosing for the nutrients in foods uh, vegan eight the culinary gym uh, chef Ramos Bravo um, Happy Herbivore, the Physicians Committee on Responsible Medicine, uh, NutritionFacts.org. All of those are resources, free resources that you can take advantage of. There's even meal delivery services, Mama Says, S-E-Z-Z, -Z, Plant Strong, Well Your World, um, where Dylan Thomas has a number of sauces and um, uh, package things that you can make really quickly into a SOS free plant-based meal um, and Napa Naturals and California, California Balsamic are two companies that have these reduced balsamic vinegars that can add a massive amount of flavor you just drizzle the vinegar over it like last night we did air fried Brussels sprouts, an entire pound, ate the entire pound, uh, on top of, oh, steamed artichoke dipped in my ranch-style dressing, and, oh, a big bowl of soup, just a big, out of my freezer library. Super good meal, and the balsamic vinegar was just drizzled over the Brussels sprouts for extra flavor, and it was just wonderful great meal. I think I've covered everything that I want to, but I want to recommend that you consider finding the, um, actually, I'm going to put it, where can I put it? Oh, I'm going to share that, um, the podcast of Dr. Uh, Nikki Davis on this channel. I'm going to post this and then I'm going to post that and you can watch her hour and a half because you can take in so much of this um, and the more you take in the more your dedication becomes easy she talks also because I we just didn't have the time to do that she talks also about some of the nutritional um, considerations that has to be made the vitamin B12 your omega-3s and 6s your proteins she has the time in an hour and a half to talk about all of those so consider watching that and look for it on this channel oh boy i hope i didn't talk you to pieces i probably did thank you for being here thank you for paying attention i'm wishing you well those are crossed fingers and wishing you a easy transition if that's what you want to do um and a dedicated transition to whole food plant-based it would make the world of difference for you <laughs> for the animals, for our planet, and um, actually for our health system. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great day because I know I'm going to. Bye-bye. <laughs>